I'm Scott Al Miller. It is Monday, the 19th of September, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua. Thanks for joining me. Welcome to the show. Pull up your coffee, grab a Danish, throw it in the microwave, take a quick pause the show, go put it in the microwave because you know that Danish is going to be better if you warm it up first. Go ahead. I will wait. Okay, I'm sure you paused in your back. Okay, good. So today we are back at work. Our holiday week is over. Not that I got a break from work, but at least it was something different. And uh, really into the grind today. I'm very far behind on videos and doing a lot of editing today, not a lot of filming. Although I did go out for a walk and get a 40 minute continuous shot done in Guadalupe. So if you watch yesterday's episode, that was filmed today and I'm filming this one tomorrow. And uh, that was that was nice getting out and getting some exercise, but it was, it was, it was a tight day uh, just to schedule things. It's often like that. The big thing today, now uh, last week, this is exciting for me, right? We hired three new people here in Nicaragua throughout the course of the week. And this morning we kind of finalized authorization to hire at least two more. And so we are collecting resumes and doing interviews. Uh, starting, started the first interviews actually started this afternoon and uh, more being done tomorrow. Uh, fingers crossed we're gonna find people pretty quickly, but it's really exciting to have growth. And these are, um, I hate to use the term real positions, but these are not hospitality positions, which we do hire pretty often and they're constant turnover, but those are really, you know, we just need so many wait staff and some come and go and you're just sometimes grabbing more people. That's kind of low key. And, and it's not so exciting because when we hire in that vein, we're not normally increasing staff. It's just someone left or it's a temporary position or whatever. But these are actual positions that are with the core company in uh, internal departments. So when we're talking about bringing on new people there, it's actually growing the company in, in permanent staff placements. Not that our hospitality staff isn't permanent, but it, it's naturally a bit more ephemeral just from how it works. Something I've noticed just from living in Nicaragua uh, for a while is um, I actually strangely, and in case you haven't noticed from watching the show, I'm very pale. Um, I'm not deathly pale. I do get out and get in the sun quite often. I'm in a lot of sun right now. I can actually feel it. Like I don't normally stand in the sun and feel the intensity of the sun. Today I really do, partially because I'm not walking very fast, so the air is not coming by. So the heat on this side is like my face is warping from one side getting so warm and the other side saying cool. Uh, but I've noticed hanging out with a lot of Nicaraguans, they actually have to put on sunscreen because they're burning long before I do. I have, other than the top of my head, and even then almost never, have I been sunburned in the year and a half that we've been here in Nicaragua. Now, when I was in Guatemala, up in the higher altitudes where it's not as hot and way more sun, my gosh, I burned so quickly. I had to be so careful. Uh, and you felt it. You would go outside, you'd be outside for 20 minutes, you'd be like, um, I feel that this is wrong. You knew really quickly that it was different. Here, uh, because we're really low and at the equator, we actually have quite a lot of filtration of the light. So the amount of UV coming through, I'm going to turn around and head the other way so I get an even burn on my face. Uh, the, the UV coming through is much less, but the heat is much more intense just because the air is warmer. Uh, I do want to turn around the camera just because this is such a cool spot. Try to imagine this spot. But without the sun glare on the lens, I'll do my best to, there we go. I'm actually holding my hand over it. Uh, and imagine it without the trash, but with the, the twinkling uh, sun off of the water and the, the quiet uh, babbling brook sound, it is so tranquil and beautiful. And it's just the trash. It's so, it, this could be cleaned up and be just a magical spot. It, uh, it makes me so sad that that something has to be done and it isn't already perfection because it's so close. Uh, but it amazes me that I like never burn and I'm outside walking for hours every day. Like there's basically never a day that I'm not outside. Now I do avoid going out at noon, um, but like right now I'm out at about two o'clock and that's still a lot of sun, no problem at all. I might get sweaty, but I'm not going to burn, not even gonna get close. I could do this all day, no problem at all. Except the top of my head, always have to have the hat. Uh, and that's just a good, good advice anyway. I do wish I had something on my nose, but because of the way I sweat, it'd be very difficult. Uh, but locals are often putting on sunscreen because they're burning, uh, even in, in a fraction of the time that I'm outside. And that, that surprises me a lot that, that that's a thing. But everyone needs sunscreen uh, in a climate like this. Um, and really, I should have it. So today's topic though, because today was really just uh, a day of work. There was really 
there's not very much to tell. It's a work day. Uh, I cooked dinner for the kids tonight. Uh, didn't go anywhere. Um, went to bed a little bit early. Did my Duolingo. That kind of stuff. That was that was kind of the day uh, with 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 quite a bit with the, the new hires. That's the big thing and and the hour walk. So I mean it was it was kind of a good day. Just um, not a lot to tell you about. The um, uh, the topic for today, though, is I'm watching a bird that just popped in the stream is flying around. The topic of the day is uh, phones here in Nicaragua. And I want to talk about this from a perspective of you may be a traveler who's going to be here temporarily, or you're going to be a resident and you're going to be here for a while. So first of all, what is the situation with phones here in the country? Cell service here in the country, two main carriers. You've got Claro and you have Tigo. Tigo used to be Movie Star. And um, I'm not sure when they changed their name a number of years ago, uh, but a lot of people still know them as Movie Star. They still have the Movie Star colors. Um, those two, they both compete. I can only imagine they each seem to have about 50% of the market. Technically, I think Claro was bigger, but I definitely feel like Tigo is bigger now. I'm not sure. Uh, I think if you're looking for a long-term service. If you're looking for something that, oh, I'm gonna take it to Europe and use it, I'm gonna travel all over the world, but I want a number based in Nicaragua, which is probably not something anyone here is thinking about. But if you were, Claro is probably your better player. They are the larger, more global player, uh, more connections, and I know they offer some like all LATAM plans, all Europe plans, cool things like that. Tigo uh, is a more local player, but seems to have a little bit more of a foothold here in Nicaragua. It's hard to say. There's probably some statistics somewhere that give a really solid feel of who owns how much of the market, but it feels like 50-50. In my little bit of the world, everyone I talk to is on Tigo, so that's what we decided to go with. Their prices are roughly identical. Their service is roughly identical. Their coverage is roughly identical. Most places where you see a tower, they have two towers side by side. Each of them has one. So you're not gonna notice a really big difference, and you can kind of pick you know, you can do some research and see which one you want, but it's gonna be kind of six of one, half dozen of the other. It's not gonna make a big difference. Both do a good job at about the same price and they both work in the same way, which is really important. Now, something that is unique from for those coming from the United States, this is not what you would expect, is that, this is kind of a cool spot to, uh, to film, I'm gonna, it's like just a grass wall. It's meant to be a fence, but it, it grew up with vines and actually turned out really nice. So this is actually kind of a cool spot. And I'm on the road, but there's very little traffic. So it kind of works out really well. If I just, it kind of seems like it was meant to be this way. Yeah, that's, that's fancy right there. Uh, this is quality content. Um, so uh, uh, everyone I know is on Tico. So the thing that, if you're coming from North America, sorry, my brain, um, you're used to the AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, all those carriers. It doesn't matter which one you're on, you can call all the others. Here, it is not designed that way. If you're on Tigo, you can call other Tigo carriers. If you're on Claro, you can call all other Claro uh, users, but calling in between them requires a different calling plan. So when you're buying minutes here, your minutes are for calling between. So if you're on Tigo, you basically, as long as you have a plan, you can call other Tigo uh, users unlimited. Same thing with Claro. If, so if everyone you know is on Tigo, you need to be on Tigo. If everyone you know is on Claro, you need to be on Claro. If you know half and half, a lot of people get two SIM cards. I kid you not, that's how people deal with it because it's cheaper than having to deal with calling and knowing it's a, it, people actually just switch between their SIM cards all the time, uh, even in country. Whole concept of things that you would never experience in North America ever. Uh, so that is a completely different thing. You have to be aware that that is the case. You also need to be aware that nobody calls normal phone numbers anymore. So that whole thing is like for your grandparents and effectively that's all died away. People do phone calls on WhatsApp now, and WhatsApp is unlimited on every plan on both carriers. So it doesn't matter who you have, as long as you use WhatsApp to do your calling, it's all unlimited and free and like whatever. So, and that's how every business uses WhatsApp. That's how they text, that's how they call. Nobody is using regular phone and regular texting down here. Uh, that's just not a thing. So. You have to rethink that. Coming from North America, we're on legacy phones. We think of things in a 1960s kind of way or a 1980s with paging. That is not what they do here. They've moved on to modern internet-based systems as the primary uh, tools for communication. So that's across the board. Rethink that and that will help you in your mind. So we'll get to that after we talk about the phones. So those are your two carriers and that's why you would choose one over the other. If you have nothing to connect you to one over the other, then whichever one you run into a store for first, if you like the, the red color of Claro, if you like 
like the blue color of Tigo. Pick that one, it doesn't matter. By the way, it's raining, like really raining now, so I'm trying to head to a tree. Um, and uh, that's more or less all that matters. If you look at their pricing plans, maybe you'll find that one, for the for the amount of time that you're going to be here, has a slightly better plan than the other. At most, you're going to be within a dollar. Uh, for real, like we're talking a dollar. So the way it works is you need to go to a... A store that sells SIM cards because before you can do anything you have to buy a SIM card and this is true anywhere uh, but unlike Guatemala for example where we wanted to buy a Claro card for Valentino when we were in Guatemala and if you watch my Guatemala videos we talked about how we drove all over uh, we went all over Guatemala City we went all over the Lake Atitlan uh, area near Panajachel and we could not we ended up never being able to get her a card so she never had phone service eventually she was able to get a hold of AT&T pay a whole bunch of money and they turned on international calling for her but it was a terrible situation she had bad service at high cost whereas Claro would have been great service at low cost um, but we were never able to buy a card because only the main Claro stores were able to sell them. Here in Nicaragua, you can buy a SIM card essentially anywhere. Not quite, but essentially. So from my house, I can actually scream across the road, straight across the road, and they will sell me one. They could throw it across the road. It's, that, it's actually that close. Um, if you walk around town, it's not every pulperia sells the SIM cards, but probably every fourth one does. There are dedicated phone stores around the city. You can stop into them. Just look for the, they're like, you know, Tigo or Claro logo goes on everything and it's more than just pay here like it's a whole thing just go in they probably have them and then there's like the Tigo and Claro stores themselves and there's kiosks they'll set up things in the street sometimes to do promotions just walk in say I'd like a number and they sell it to you on a card now that I don't know the pricing with Claro because I just got Tigo if you're watching the show I got this on Friday um, I've been wanting it for a while Dominica's had one for a while Paul's had one for a little bit less the hotel has some all of our friends have them and I'm just way behind on getting a card because I've been making do with my T-Mobile and I tend to be home a lot. And when I am out like right now, I typically don't have my phone with me, so it doesn't matter nearly as much. But I'm starting to do more and more travel. I'm starting to do more and more things. I need to have something. So I decided to get Tigo because that's what the hotel and everyone I know has. Uh, so I bought one. So that was 90 cord. That's about $2.80. That gives you, I believe, one day of service and it gives you the actual card with your new number. Once you have that number, that's your number. You own that card and you can top it up anytime you want. Roughly the same thing will happen with Claro. The price may be slightly different, but again, they track almost identically. They have to because of the way the market works. Everyone just memorizes the prices and how you do it, and they just hope that you pick them instead of the competition. So, went and bought that, and then pretty much immediately you're going to want to put some, some minutes on it. So the way that it works here uh, is that both Tigo and Claro offer what's called prepay and postpay, or prepago, postpago plans. Postpago is what you're used to in the United States where you get a service and you pay a monthly fee, you put your credit card on and it pay, charges automatically. These are going to be more expensive services and almost nobody does that here. It's more expensive for relatively obvious reasons. You're paying with a credit card. There's an overhead to that. You're paying after you use the service. There's a fee to that. You're taking a risk that you're going to disappear and not pay your bill. There's a, there's a cost to that. So all those things cause it to be a more expensive service. Because it's going to be a more expensive service, they make it a premium. That is the plan where you can get international calling and things like that. Things like travel, roaming internationally, those are going to be on those plans, which most people here don't need, so they're very unpopular. I actually don't know anyone with one of those plans, including any of us. I've thought about it because I would be interested in making my main phone here, and so I have international roaming. I may do that sometime in the future, but for now, I don't need it. There's plenty of other ways to do that, like adding more SIM cards, and so it all works just fine. So that's where we are currently uh, that we're doing prepago like everyone else. Now, how do you actually deal with a prepago? Easy. You go into any of the places that I mentioned, plus way more than those, essentially any pulperia anywhere, and as I say this, I'm going to start walking and see if we can come across a Tigo or Claro store or even better, both, and I know where one is from here, a couple blocks away, so if I wander slowly, we'll get there at some point. You simply look for their logos hanging out on the side of a building. Nearly every street has them. Almost every block has one or more stores that sell them, and they will say, Pago Aki, and all you have to do is stop in and tell them you want to top up and tell them which plan you want. Do you want the one day, the three day, the five day, the seven day, the 15 day? The 15 day is, as far as I know, the biggest one. I'm not sure what this noise is. I think this is like a corn dryer. There's like an operation that goes on over here. And you can hear some big equipment in there. I honestly don't know what they do. It's definitely 
some kind of agricultural processing. All right. And you go in, you say what you want, you show them your phone number, and you pay in cash. That's it. It's that simple. Now, I don't know the cost of all the plans. I believe the five-day plan is 70 cords, so almost exactly $2. The uh, seven-day plan, I think, is the best deal. That's 110 cord or $3. And then for, th uh, I think it's 300 cord, it may be 250 it must be 250 you can get the 15-day plan. That's not as good. Other than not having to top up quite as often, that, that's not a good deal. So the seven day plan is actually the sweet spot where you get the best service, all the best features at the lowest price per day. And typically you're gonna wanna be on every day. You're rarely gonna wanna be like, oh, I'm gonna turn it off for three days and turn it on for three days. Locals will do that. If they're gonna be home, they know they don't have to travel. If you're, if you're on a lower income, well, sometimes you only turn on your phone when you're gonna be away from home or you only turn one phone on most of the time and then if you're traveling a spouse may turn their phone on things like that there's a lot of things that people do to keep the cost down because phone costs are one of the highest costs of living one of the highest components of the cost of living uh, in a country like this even though overall they are much cheaper than uh, they would be in the United States much much cheaper so if you look at the seven-day plan that's three dollars you would need four of them per month that gives you only twelve dollars for extremely high quality Quality service and that's with a lot of data you get um, I think that is four gigs of general data per week well, you can always pay for more. It gives you a certain number of minutes to call to Claro, which you essentially never need. You get unlimited calling on Tigo, which again you don't really need. Now real quickly I'm gonna turn the camera around. These are old signs but these so this is Tigo and it says buy or charge here and then this is Claro and it just says charge here and you're going to find shops like this. Hola. Hola. You're going to find shops like this on nearly every block. And most will not allow you to buy the cards. Almost all will allow you to recharge. And I already, half a block away, there is another one I'm going to show you in a second. So we're heading towards that one now. And uh, so at $12 a month, you also get full-time unlimited WhatsApp, unlimited Instagram, unlimited YouTube. So a bunch of the services that you would use heavily uh, that would normally use a lot of data, those don't count towards your data caps. And so, like I said, people here use WhatsApp instead of calling and other things. That's unlimited, completely unlimited. You wanna send videos on that? You want a video chat all day long? You wanna uh, send files? You want to talk? You want to uh, anything? you can just do it. You don't have to worry about using your data. You don't have to worry about minutes or anything like that. So the actual fact that you only get four gig per week actually goes a really, really long way. That's a, that's a lot. Okay, I'm gonna turn the camera again. This is another store. That's how quickly I walk to another store. And this one has, here are the 15 day plan and the seven day plan right here. Uh, and you can see you get a little bit more data or it's essentially the same data per day. Oh, and it is, it is 300. So it's much better. The seven day plan is much better. And uh, it shows the different plans and what you get. And it, this is unlimited Facebook, uh, Instagram, some service I don't know, Twitter um, and YouTube, Spotify, uh, a few things like that. And then the same essential plans with Claro. You'll see they're basically the same, almost no difference. They will sometimes change the days. Notice this one gives you a little bit more data for a little bit less uh, on, on Claro. So Claro, just a touch cheaper, it looks like. Worth noting, but really, really tiny amounts. 10 cord, uh, so maybe maybe 20 cents or so uh, is how much cheaper that is. Uh, but you do get that half gig more service. So if you're really looking to, to save pennies and get a little bit more data, Claro looks like it has the lead according to that sign I just looked at. But you could chop around and look at the plans you're gonna get. If you're coming here for three days, just get a three day plan. If you're coming, well, maybe maybe a five day plan so you have a little bit of overlap, because whatever, you know, it's a dollar. Um, but if you're if you're gonna be here in a resident, you're gonna wanna do like I am, get on a seven day and just renew every week and always have service and just pay uh, $3 a week. Great, perfect. Uh, but if you're here on vacation, get the amount of time that's gonna work for you. And honestly, if you're here on vacation and you're here for 14 days, 15 days, 
just get the 15 day plan, do it once, don't worry about recharging it, right? Make your life simple. Is it the, is it the most effective? Could you save $1? Yeah, you could save $1. Don't, just get the 15 day plan. It's a perfect one for people on vacation. Make your life easy, great. Uh, but for me, I top up all the time, or I will be, so it makes sense to save the dollar because it's $1 every two weeks. Uh, so, that easy, that's the price that you can find them everywhere. This is a city, but if you're driving down the highway, they'll be on pulperias as you go down the highway all the time. You can basically walk through the countryside. You will find places that will sell you the service almost anywhere that you go. It really is just everywhere. And I'm trying to look as I walk down if there's any within sight on the side streets as I go by. And I know there's one or two down, I'm pretty sure, I'm going to point here. Sorry for all the spinning around of the camera. I'm pretty sure that this place on the corner right there uh, actually sells them. That's where I buy my eggs some days. I'm going to keep you pointed forward because I'm going to see if I can find any more as I go forward. And of course, some places are open in the middle of the night. Some places are not. Uh, so you never, you never know which one you're going to want to use, but you can stop in anywhere. And I've been with people who need to charge their phones because it's something that happens all the time. I actually don't think that they do charging here, but they, even places that don't say it may do it. Uh, adio, because it's so common, but they're also available so much that not everybody wants to do it because it's just one extra thing. And it does require that you have a little bit extra equipment uh, to do the recharging. Bye. <laughs> they know me really well. They love our dogs. Um, so now what you need to be able to use these is, and this is a problem only for people coming from the US really, the United States allows phone locking and this is not something that most countries are used to. So in Nicaragua, if you talk to people, they have no idea that Americans do not own the right to use their phone however they want. And this confuses them a lot. They're very lost about this because they think that we have you know, more consumer protections and more freedom in the US, but phones are certainly an area where the US is very constrained. And when you are uh, getting a phone from a T-Mobile, an AT&T, a Verizon, typically they lock your phones and don't allow you to put SIM cards from other carriers in them. They actually have anti-travel rules. So here's another one, it's how quickly we came. And this is one that sells them again. So the one in the middle did not sell them, it only recharged. This one sells and recharges, and you can see they have all the plans listed outside for both carriers. There's really only the two carriers. So, uh, so the majority of people coming from the United States do not have the right to add service to their phones when they're in other countries. Other countries, this is an assumed thing that you have to do all the time. It is a part of daily life. The idea that you change your SIM card, that you change your number, that you change your carrier. They're not just things that people do because they're poor or because they work differently. It's because that is how the entire system everywhere in the world. Oh, look, and we're at another one. This is only a recharge. You can't buy, you can't buy a number, but so that is, our third one on this particular block. And now this is back to the same store that we were looking at from before, and they do have the signs up. So that's that's another place that you can buy them all in that tiny, tiny little space. So you don't have to walk very far. Now I think this block does not have any, so I have a little ways to go. It's not like we're gonna keep popping up, but oh wait, we're gonna turn, this is ridiculous. That right there is another store selling them. I don't know anything about that store, but that's, that's how close more are. You are never, more than half a block away from someone who can recharge your card and rarely more than two blocks away from someone who can sell you one. That's pretty much the math everywhere in country. Um, so with the US carriers, they normally lock your phones. And they do this for two reasons. One is they don't want you to have the ability to leave them until you, and they'll do anything they can to lock down your phone and keep you from having that service. Okay, I'm gonna, it's too loud at the church. So I'm not gonna continue. That is a full painted Tigo store right there by the way. Okay. So Verizon especially makes it difficult because they don't share the networks with most other countries. So their phones physically quite often don't work or don't work very well in other countries simply because of the bands that they're on. That is improving. It used to be impossible to use them anywhere. Now it's just difficult, but they almost never unlock their phones. T-Mobile and AT, likewise, they lock their phones under most circumstances. If you're on iPhone, you have some power to get away from that if you go to the iPhone store and you work really hard. But in general, your phones are gonna be locked and you don't have the option to put a SIM card in. Even if you can put one in physically, 
they won't allow it to activate because they essentially own your phone, not you, and they don't allow you to change or have a second carrier. And they do this for two reasons, one to keep you from leaving, and the other is because they sell services often at like $10 a day. Keep in mind here, for really good service, completely unlimited or essentially unlimited at incredible speeds, we pay $12 a month. But from the United States to come here, they forcibly charge you $10 per day. And I've heard this from a lot of people and a lot of carriers. Now, who's not like this? T-Mobile is not like that. I'm on T-Mobile as well. And one of the reasons that we keep T-Mobile, and they've frustrated me a lot this year, you can see my videos about it, but one of the reasons that we consistently use T-Mobile is that they have full international calling all the time. So our US numbers are active, and as long as we have them and have the T-Mobile service, we can go almost anywhere in the world. It's about 137 countries. And the moment we land, the phone just turns on and says, welcome to whatever country you landed in. Here's your service. Uh, and they'll say you get unlimited text, you get, hola. You get unlimited texting, you get unlimited data, but the data is at 256K, right? Now we want 350 meg here. We want something really, really fast. So that's 250K is painfully slow. That's a quarter of a meg, right? In the United States, everyone advertises you need 500 meg, you need a gig. This is, this is a one four thousandth of that, right? This is really, really slow, but it's enough. If you have to load Google Maps, it will eventually load. It is enough that if you need to send an email, it will go out. If you need to text someone on WhatsApp, they will get it. So those things work and they work very reliably, just quite slowly. So it really important to have as a traveler, something like that, T-Mobile or Claro or someone who has those kinds of services and will automatically turn on anywhere. So now I have a Nicaragua number here, but I can travel to Guatemala and my Nicaragua number won't keep working, but my, uh, my US one will, and I'll be back on T-Mobile and I'll have slow service, but I'll be able to do it. If I wanna pop out my Nicaragua card and pop in a Guatemalan card, no problem, I can do that. I can also, and now this is something that iPhone has, a few Androids have this, but very few, there's a thing called eSIM, and that's you have your SIM card, but you can convert it to an eSIM where basically the phone reads everything off the card, encrypts it, and puts it into the phone. And this is a big advantage of the iPhone. So I did this with T-Mobile. Went to the, I had to go to the Apple store. They had to put up a fight with T-Mobile because T-Mobile was being a serious problem. They could not give me a working phone for anything. Go see my videos from last year. They really made me angry. And uh, the, the, basically the secret with T-Mobile is never let them give you a business plan. You must stay on personal plans. Their business system does not work. I can go into detail sometime. It simply doesn't work. They admitted they had no functional way to work with their business plan. It 100%, all of your, your support, all of your service, all of your guarantees, all right out the window. You are on your own and when it doesn't work, tough. You, they actually said your only choice is to move to another carrier and go to Apple and buy a physical phone from them. We can't help you. That was their answer. T-Mobile said our hands are so tied because you're on a business plan, you need to move to another carrier, go call AT&T. Actually what they said. So uh, that, that's a problem. But if you stay on the personal plans, you should be fine. And they give you this international calling, which really does work. And they really do have good coverage. And in using uh, T-Mobile like that, um, it gives me this great flexibility. And because Apple was able to convert my physical SIM on T-Mobile into this eSIM on the phone, I now have an open physical SIM slot. Now I can go anywhere, like Nicaragua, buy a local SIM, put it into my phone because my SIM slot is empty, and use it. Now I've not yet figured out how or if I can convert my Tigo to an eSIM and open it up again, because what I would really like to have is uh, multiple eSIMs. When I talked to Apple, they said at least 30 can be done this way, maybe hundreds, they don't know, but they know that 30 is a working number. Um, you can just keep putting numbers into the phone. It'll have all those SIM cards ready, and you can just go into a menu and pick which one you want to work at any given time. Huge advantage of iPhone. But but you can find uh, Androids that have double SIM slots. So you can put two physical SIMs in. You can get some that's still there somewhere. Someone does eSIM. Um, all those things exist. I just want to point out again. So the corner store that we were just at is right here somewhere, right there, uh, that had the Tigo. And here, just a couple houses down from it, is a pharmacy that also has Tigo and Claro recharging. So we're still just a couple houses away from where we started and there's more and more of these services. It's so easy and you'll always find someone who's open and available. And I'm not even sure if that's two places or one that have those. I think that's all one place, but it's two doors with two different paint jobs. It may be two completely different stores just that close to each other. Okay, so, uh, so because I have that eSIM, I just pop in the card and so I have both on my phone at all times. 
Um, I really want to get a Guatemalan number. I really want to get a Costa Rican number and have a couple of those ready to go. And you then just recharge them when I'm in country and turn them off the other times. That would be perfect. So I'm hoping I can work that out. Uh, the speeds, the coverage, everything here is excellent. Now I have a great story. This is fantastic. So Alan was just in the United States and uh, like last week, and he is the same as me. He has T-Mobile and he has Tigo, exact same plans. He has the, the post Pago in the United States. So he's on the monthly and just have the international coverage so he can go anywhere. So he was in Mexico and it worked and all that. And he has Tigo prepaid here in country. So he has the exact same plans that I do with that as well. So we're, we're completely mirrored. When he went to the United States, so first of all, he's in Illinois internet outage. He had more internet outage in his one week in the United States than we have experienced in a year and a half here in Nicaragua from the landlines. Then he was unable to use his T-Mobile service in the United States because it went down at the same time. So he had a double ISP outage at the same time in the United States while he was there for just one week, barely any time in the US, and his, the amount of infrastructure problems compared to Nicaragua was so dramatic. Now, he did not lose power while he was in the US. We did lose power for three or four minutes while he was there. Yes, most of the US does continue to have better electrical distribution than Nicaragua. That much is true. <coughs> Hello. But uh, when they have power outages in the US, which there are a few million Americans without power as I'm recording this, right? Uh, Nicaragua typically uh, loses power for um, 30 seconds to two or three minutes when there's a local lightning strike. That seems to be what we see most often and it happens relatively frequently. So we have battery backups on things and with that we basically don't notice. Air conditioning shuts off, fans shut off, but it's only for a minute most times and it comes right back on, no big deal. In the US, very rarely is an outage uh, last much less than much less than half an hour, if not several hours. And uh, in many cases, it's weeks of rolling blackouts and things like that. So we're, we're constantly hearing these major horror stories of huge electrical problems in the US. We are not getting stuff like that here in Nicaragua. We are just annoyed that every so often we lose power for a minute. Our tolerance for, for things going down has, has really gone down. And uh, we have an expectation of a quality of infrastructure now that we live in Nicaragua that we would never have had in the US. Everyone I know in the US is just like, ah, the power's out for the day. Ah, internet's down again. Like those are just normal things. Here, no one would, everybody would be like, what are you talking about? Of course the power doesn't go out for a day. Of course the internet doesn't go down. What? That's nuts. So our perspective has changed heavily uh, because of the quality of the services here. But uh, that said, so while he was there, he had um, this, this outage of the normal internet that we've never experienced here, and then an outage of T-Mobile, again, never experienced here, not even with T-Mobile here. And, and when he was there, his T-Mobile speeds, which was 5G, was only getting, this is really loud, hold on. His T-Mobile on 5G was only getting one half of a megabit per second. That's his speed in the US on 5G, what they claim to be 5G in the US. His, so he switched to his Tigo account, and this is when T-Mobile had come back up because obviously he had no service for a while. Everyone's coming down the street today, hold. And uh, so when T-Mobile was up and working, he tested, his, or, well, yeah, he tested a Tigo account from Nicaragua, his Nicaragua card, in the US got several hundred megabits per second and his T-Mobile got a half megabit per second. Hundreds of times faster on the Tigo. So it, it's just, it's mind blowing how much better the services are, the contracts are, everything from here. It's, every time I say this, I feel like people hear me say it's better and what they take away is it's good enough, I shouldn't worry about it. And it's not the case. What I'm saying is you're used to things that are so bad. You have no idea what good is like if you're coming from the US or Canada. There's some of the worst internet, some of the worst service, some of the worst infrastructure anywhere in the developed world. And when you come to a place like Nicaragua, yes, they have some challenges. These are not their challenges. These things are not just okay. They are so much better, so much cheaper, so much faster, so much more reliable, so much generally available, so much easier to deal with than they are in the US. 
I am not saying that they're okay. I'm saying they blow it out of the water. Hear what I'm saying, because everybody repeats it as, well, it's not as fast, but it's okay. No, it's so much faster. At one point, we measured it as 1,400 times faster in one comparison. 1,400 times faster here, right? I talk to businesses in the US every day, and we're constantly saying, our internet is this fast, and this is what it does for it. We're doing comparisons because we're showing how phones work, or downloads, or media uploads, or whatever. And they'll be like, okay, what do we have? I'm like, okay, you're about 20% of what we have. That's probably enough, but it's not, you know, you might want a little bit more than that. And uh, they'll be paying four or five. They'll be like, what do you pay? We'll be like this. And they're like, we pay four times that, and we get a fraction of what you get. Where are you? We're like, we're in Nicaragua. That's why our service is so good. And they're like, what? How is it that much better? Like, if it was similar, that's one thing. If it was good enough, that'd be another thing. It's so much better, and cell phones are one of those spots. It's fantastically better. Just, you can't understand how much better these things are until you start using them here. And it's every little thing. It's, it's, it's more free, it's more uh, competitive, it's more uh, flexible, it's more cost-effective, everything. Okay, so the WhatsApp thing. Years ago, because phones never became as entrenched here, and some things like faxes never existed, um, because phones never became entrenched and because that's an American technology, not because it's an American technology, the US embraces it because it's an American thing. Uh, here, people wanted more flexibility. They didn't want to be monitored all the time. They, didn't want, they wanted more security. They want more flexibility. They want to be able to move internationally. They don't want people to know where they are. Services like WhatsApp took over when they came around. And I was in this region seven years ago and WhatsApp was already the dominant thing at that time. So we're not talking about something that just happened. We're saying this is, this is more than seven years ahead of where the US is in a lot of these things today from a cultural perspective. So everybody moved to WhatsApp because it's free. No one's paying for this, right? It's unlimited use with everything. It allows them to talk to family internationally. It allows them to keep their numbers no matter where in the world they go. If they're traveling, if they have friends that move between countries, and a lot of people here do, uh, so it's really common to be like, oh, my son, my brother, my father, they moved to the United States, or they're gonna be there for several months, so I want to uh, be able to call them. I don't know where they are at any given moment. I have friends who move back and forth every couple days. I have no idea where they are. I don't need to, because WhatsApp allows me to transparently call them, text them, video chat them, send them files, ad hoc anywhere in the world, encrypted, end to end, anytime. Um, and that's a really big deal that it takes away the, the purpose of traditional phones. It takes away the function of texting. All those things, they're unnecessary. We have this solution to it that is so much better and everyone is using. So because everyone went to the same service here, life is that easy, right? You don't need to worry, or do they have this? Of course they have it, everybody has it, right? That's just what you call. When you give someone a phone number, you expect it to be a WhatsApp message. You don't say, here's my number, could you WhatsApp me? No, no one does that. It's Of course it's WhatsApp, that's what there is. Um, no one's using that Apple messaging, no one's using Google's proprietary, none of that, right? It, it would be, why would you, that's weird. Why would you use something proprietary, something that's from another country, something that's monitored, something that's unencrypted? None of those things make sense. There's no reason to do it. It's actually more effort. Once you switch to WhatsApp, it makes everything easier. So that's what people do here. So if you're coming here, one, plan on getting a SIM card. Find out if you can get an unlocked phone. If you can't, you're just gonna have to pay the extortion fees to your, your phone carrier and there's nothing you can do. Move to T-Mobile, save yourself. Um, if you're on T-Mobile, maybe you wanna live with the slow service and it's enough. That's fine, I did it for years, so I'm not, I'm not saying you gotta have it for a week, but if you're on vacation, a lot of times it's nice to not have to deal with that. Uh, but if that's enough, okay. If not, if you have an unlocked phone, get a prepaid card, 90 Cordoba, top it up for the amount of time you're here, maybe an extra couple days so you don't have to worry about things, should you stay over, it's really cheap. Pop it in, have them set it up for you, life is grand. Start using WhatsApp. You start using it before you leave so that you can communicate with people from afar and here transparently so that everything's ready. You know how it works. Life will be so easy. And then that just plays into your travel abroad for the rest of your life, right? This is gonna make everything you do always easier because you're gonna want WhatsApp no matter where you go. You're gonna want to know how to use SIM cards wherever you go. You're gonna want to have an unlocked phone. Once you learn that you have a locked phone, fix that. Make sure that on your next cycle, you don't let that happen again if you're gonna travel, because that's a really important part of protecting yourself 
from safety perspective, you don't want someone who can shut off your phone number on you. You don't want someone who can do things to charge you extra money that could put you in danger. You don't want any of that, right? You want the flexibility to be able to make emergency calls when you need to make emergency calls. No ifs, ands, or buts. Your phone is an important lifeline. It is a key to your comfort. Is it a key to your safety? It is a key to being able to make it places on your vacation. It's how you get your maps. It's how you get your directions. It's how you contact your hotel. It's how you book your Airbnb. You need a working phone in the modern world. Don't allow American monopolistic practices dictate you are not actually beholden to those. You can get unlocked devices. Simply buy a phone off of eBay. Go to the Apple store and buy your phone there. They will protect you. They will not sell you a locked phone. They will make sure it's unlocked. They will tell you how to do an eSIM. Do those things. Don't let the companies, the phone companies, dictate how your phone is going to work because they're not acting in your interest. Their job is to convince you that they're going to give you a better deal by you giving up your flexibility and freedom. And once you've done that, they're going to charge you so much more because you've handed them the ability to do so and given them zero incentive not to. Why would they not charge you an arm and a leg? That's how they make their money. Don't give them the power to do that as completely at your discretion. So that is huge advice. I'm a business consultant. We say this to companies all the time. Don't just throw the power to control your company into someone else's hands, especially when they're predatory. Absolutely don't let that happen. Uh, if you're looking for someone who doesn't lock your phones, you can do prepaid in the United States. I've never used like Mint Mobile, but I've looked into them. I'm thinking about moving to them. Plans like that will give you a lot of the flexibility uh, that you need and they don't lock your phones because you bring your own phone. That's one of the big things. I go to the iPhone store, I go to Apple and buy my iPhones. Uh, that's what I do now. And so I'm guaranteed to get an unlocked phone that Apple's able to fix, that they has their warranty that they oversee and they make sure that I stay safe. That is a much better process. If I need to get financing, I can get it from them in many cases. Uh, if you can't get it for the iPhone, you can get it for other things, but hopefully you can get it for the iPhone. And I'm not saying that the iPhone's the way to go. If you like Android, there's lots of options. You can also buy phones here in country. Uh, Xiaomi and other vendors have really affordable phones here. So. Believe it or not, if you're on vacation for a few weeks, it is probably actually cheaper to buy a new phone here in country, buy a prepaid card, put it on, and get really wildly good service on a dedicated phone than it is to pay the per day fees from the United States for locked phones. That sounds mathematically impossible. Trust me, it is not. You can get phones here for about $150. So at 10 days, hola. <laughs> So at 10 days, at, at uh, I'm sorry, 15 days at $10 a day, that's 150 for the phone right there. If you're staying here for 21 days, it's actually going to be cheaper uh, to, to buy a phone. And then you have another phone. Then you have two phones and, and more things. And, and if someone steals that phone, you have that much protection as well. It, look at things another way uh, when you're traveling. Sometimes that's important. Think outside the box. Sometimes you get your best value. That was a lot of talk about phones. I was expecting this to be about half this length episode, but there's actually quite a bit to talk about and a lot of things you have to be aware of from a technology standpoint because uh, the U.S. really behaves differently than... <laughs> everybody's waving. Uh, really behaves differently than in a lot of other countries, and so we have so much uh, built-in assumptions to how phones are going to work, to what they're going to cost, to how we handle them, that we have to overcome those things to realize, oh, there's... This is a different approach, and when I embrace the local approach, I probably will get a much better deal. There's, there's some really good options for you if you need a phone when you're traveling, and generally you do. And if you're a resident, certainly you need one. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Ask your questions below. Uh, if you need any more information on phones, let me know. If you don't know how to use WhatsApp, hit me up. We'll talk about that. And uh, leave your comments. Leave your questions. I will see all of you. Everybody's looking at the camera, but it's facing the other way. There we go. <laughs> Nobody can figure out that it's facing my face. And uh, I will see all of you tomorrow.